right. Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is Scottish Parliament corporate body questions. I call question number one. John Scott, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliament corporate body what plans it has to address the pooling of water on the roof of the garden lobby. David Stewart, please. Mm. Uh, thank you, President Officer. As the member may recall, a question relating to the garden lobby uh, roof drainage was raised on the 10th of November 2016, uh, and members were given the following advice. An inspection of the roof was carried out in 2007 by a property service consultant, Lee Boyd. The garden lobby roof consists of stainless steel cladding and glazed panelled roof, uh, roof lights designed as leaves positioned close together. This, combined with the three-dimensional form, creates a complex roof arrangement. Their inspection confirmed that this design can lead to water pooling in certain areas after heavy or persistent rainfall. This bespoke roof has shallow falls and raised seams, which are part of the original architectural design. Our consultants were able to advise that this does not affect the roof's waterproof structure. Uh, we clean this roof regularly to maintain its appearance and to check that the drainage points are clear and free flowing. However, areas of pooling are still expected to occur. John Scott, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer, and thank uh, Mr Stewart for that answer. But members of the corporate body will be aware that in recent weeks, not only has standing water covered a large area of the roof, and that a red bloom and algal bloom sort has developed on the roof. So has the corporate body considered installing one or several small electric float pumps discreetly located to drain off this pond of water and thereby reduce the area covered by standing water, which in the long term, notwithstanding Mr Stewart's reply, will help maintain the integrity of the roof as well as reducing the annual cost of cleaning the roof of some £7,000 or thereby. And, and as such an investment in roof drainage solution would probably pay for itself in one year. There you go, David Stewart. Thorough sure. question. Uh, th thank you, President Officer. Um, perhaps it would be helpful if I provided a little bit more information uh, for the member. Uh, facilities management have been aware of this issue since occupation of the building in 2004, and this led to commissioning an inspection by our property service consultants, as I said, Lee Boyd. Following review of this inspection, facilities management now undertake regular reviews of the standing water in the roof and have currently an effective maintenance regime to clear the standing water from the roof and remove any discoloration caused by the algae growth. FM regularly review this issue with the on-site contractor to make sure there's no change in the roof integrity and that the maintenance interventions are frequent enough to keep the issue under control. However, I'm very happy to arrange for officials to meet again with Mr Scott to discuss the issue further and to assess the very constructive suggestions he has brought forward this afternoon. Thank you. Question two, Morris Golden. To ask the Scottish parliamentary corporate body whether it plans to increase the number of electric vehicle charging points. David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Yes, there are plans to place, uh, to, in place to increase the number of electric vehicle charging points from our current two spaces to four. And grant funding has already been applied for, for additional electric vehicle charging, and the Energy Saving Trust has provisionally awarded us 75% of the costs, up to a cap of 1,500. The full cost of installing a vehicle charging point, which serves two parking spaces, is between two and three thousand pounds. The additional charging point is on the corporate body's project list, and we will progress it in due course. Currently, both existing charging points are in use most business days. Therefore, the corporate body is proactively planning for the future by ensuring capacity is available. We currently have access to an electric car as part of the Enterprise Car Club. Uh, members who wish to know that it is exclusively able to book for business journeys and offers members, member staff and corporate body staff the option of undertaking journeys in a more environmental friendly way, just register on the Enterprise Car Club website to book the vehicle. Maurice Golden. Uh, I welcome that uh, very positive response, but given the targets to vastly increase electric vehicle usage, will the corporate body revisit the number of charging points allocated as and when required? David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Again, it might be useful if I can provide a slightly more detailed answer for the member. Uh, the Scottish Parliament obviously works hard to reduce its carbon footprint, and we already have a target to reduce our carbon footprint by 42% by 2020, in line with the Scottish Government's targets. We are on track to achieve this, with emissions already down 37% on the 2005-06 uh, baseline uh, figure. 
We do encourage members to register with the Enterprise Car Club. If members and staff are converting to electric vehicles, we will encourage them to inform officials in advance so as we can incorporate this information into our future plans for further electric charging points. Supplementary, Claudia Beamish. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I note the positive answer from my colleague David Stewart. Uh, however, given the, that the transport sector is not now the largest emitter of greenhouse gases contributing to global climate change, it is, of course, important that we continue to lead by example in the Scottish Parliament. So, in addition to the charging points, what is the corporate body doing to encourage modal shift in the Parliament to get greater use of public transport and active travel? And what information does the corporate body hold on transport choices of the Parliament to inform its future actions? Well, it's a bit out with the original question, but if you wish to answer it, Mr Stewart. Um, thank you, uh, President Officer. Uh, the Scottish Parliament, of course, has an uh, extensive sustainable travel plan, which is available on our website, which details measures taken to encourage staff and visitors to adopt active and sustainable travel. I agree with the points the members raised. Clearly, we want to achieve our climate change targets. Thank you. Question three, John Mason. A thank you. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what consideration it has given to reducing the portion size of food served in the garden level restaurant. David Stewart. I hear, gro I hear groans all round about that one, Mr Mason. David Stewart. Uh, 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 thank you, President Officer. The portion sizes served in the garden level restaurant are based on standard catering practices for workplace restaurants. We have no plans to reduce portion sizes. Thank you. I must come back here more often, President Officer. Um, uh, though customers can ask for smaller portions and our catering staff will be happy to oblige. When developing the menus, our executive chef takes into consideration that lunch may be the main meal of the day for many customers. However, there are lighter options available. John Mason. Well, I do thank the member for that reply. But on, on a kind of serious note, I mean, we are told by both the cancer and diabetes sectors that obesity is one of the major problems they face. And I do accept that some people need to eat more uh, than others do. But the assumption in the restaurant, <laughs> the assumption in the restaurant seems to be that you, the norm is a very large portion and you have to really, really ask for a smaller one. Last week, last week, last week, last week, we had a, a very large pizza offered to us, plus, plus chips, when in fact half, half a pizza was sufficient for me. David Stewart. Um, I think the people have spoken, President Officer. <laughs> but, um, the, um, the Garden Level Restaurant holds the Healthy Living Award Plus, and this means all meals are nutritionally balanced and that within the area, wide choice is available to our customers. We are rarely audited for the award to ensure that our meals continue to meet the criteria. Where possible, we will indicate to customers the calorific value of a meal, allowing them to make a more informed choice. I dread what's coming. Supplementary, Murdo Fraser, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Deputy <laughs> Officer. What comfort does the corporate body have for all the growing lads and lassies around the chamber who occasionally would like larger portions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I fear we're descending uh, into some nonsense, but David Stewart, if you uh, feel you want to answer. Uh, thank you, President Officer. We are thinking of reallocating members' rooms so that members need more exercise would have to go to the top floor. <laughs> Question for Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Body how many potential lethal weapons have been seized by security staff in 2017. Jackson Carlow, please. Um, the Parliamentary Security Office does not... Oh, God, I put my card in. Ah. Oh. 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 Fail, fail. Some people are enjoying your misdemeanour there. Uh, the Parliamentary Security Office does not use the definition lethal weapon. I mean, Mr Stewart might be a bit of a lethal weapon himself. But the term knives and bladed articles is used. All knives, pen knives, scissors and other sharp objects carried by visitors are retained by security staff for the duration of their visit. The total number of such objects retained by security officers in 2017, up to and including the 8th of June, is 841. Knives that can be carried legally in a public place in Scotland are returned to the visitor on leaving. Uh, the number of knives surrendered to Police Scotland during 2017 is 70. Alexander Stewart, please. I thank the member for the answer, Presiding Officer. It is paramount that visitors, staff mm. and members feel safe in the building. Uh, can I ask what additional measures have been introduced in recent months to allay any fears and tighten security? 
Jackson Carlow, please. Uh, in partnership with the Parliamentary Authorities, Police Scotland recently undertook a comprehensive review of the Scottish Parliament building and external policing arrangements. The corporate body has now received the review report and noted its recommendations, which will be taken forward by the Parliament's Head of Security in collaboration with Police Scotland and other relevant agencies. It would not be appropriate to discuss any particular recommendations as they pertain to the security of the building and those who work and visit here. Thank you. Question five. Monica Lennon, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what assessment it has made of the danger of cyber attacks on its IT systems. David Stewart, please. Thank you, President Officer. The Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body recognised the danger cyber attacks pose, and our advisory audit board recently considered an independent review of our cyber security maturity. This review looked across the three critical security domains of technology, people and crisis management and offered assurance that sufficient and effective arrangements are in place to manage cyber threats and risks. Without going into detail for obvious reasons, we also take advice from the police, uh, the security services and the National Cyber Security Centre. Monica Lennon, please. Thank you. I thank David Stewart for his answer. I wonder if there's further, available, further uh, advice available to staff and members on any actions they can take to protect themselves against online hacking. And in particular, is there any advice available on the use of USB drives on parliamentary devices? David Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. I think the member makes a number of excellent points. Um, cyber security, of course, is a critical risk area that organisations need to understand. It's a risk that continues to evolve and should not be seen solely as an information technology issue. Uh, all users of the IT systems have responsibility in this area and could I recommend to the member and all members the information security guide that's available through IT, which gives advice on actions that members uh, should carry out. The BIT office has a number of tools to identify any irregular and unusual activity and as a requirement with the contract with the Scottish Parliament, CGI prepare monthly reports of network performance, server capacity and certain aspects of some security related management information including the identification of malware, the status of anti virus software across the desktop state and any threats blocked by existing firewalls. Thank you very much. That concludes questions to the corporate body and I look forward to the portions that John Mason receives now in the canteen. I'll allow a short pause while the front bench change places.